Hi, this is Teresa Polito from Color Crazy. I'm the author of Hook, Loop, and Lock and Locking Loops. I've created this colorful locker hooked Phoenix rooster for five mesh canvas. In this video, I'll show you some locker hooking and stitching techniques that are used to make the rooster and also review the materials used for completing this project. And here we are locker hooking the outer rows around your design and this will create a nice frame, uh, frame look for the outer rows. According to your pattern, you're going to locker hook uh, the rows in pumpkin and then locker hook the inner rows like I'm doing here with papana, the papana strips. Now papana is actually woven fabric that's cut on the bias and adds wonderful texture because it frays as you use it. You're going to want to pull up the inner rows a little lower than the outer rows, so a quarter inch on the inside and about three eighths of an inch on the outside for the pumpkin color. And just keep that in mind as you work. As you're working on this rooster design, you're going to want to locker hook each design element separately. And here I wanted to show you how you can actually travel your locking medium and your fabric strips as you're working different design elements. And you can see that I'm moving the locker hook through this pupana edging on the body of the rooster. And I am continuing to push through. I'm going to travel the locking medium as we move through this design element. And this just makes it a little easier and a little um, tidier to clean up later. Okay, there we go. And I'm grabbing a fabric strip, strip on the back side and pulling it up right there. And we're gonna pull the locking medium through and we've traveled it through that whole row there. And you'll have different opportunities to do that as you work this design. There we go. As I mentioned before, for this Phoenix Rooster, you're going to want to locker hook each design element separately and just take your time uh, to get each part done right. Um, and here I'm doing a, using an olive color in a, a hand dyed cotton fabric. And we're just doing a traditional locker hooking. It's a little bit on the slant but I'm just making sure that the loops are pulled up within the outline. And as you can see, a lot of this is already locker hooked here. Uh, we're just finishing up this particular area. And there's no particular sort of order. You can work on the body first. Um, I do recommend you, you work on the outer frame, outer rows first, and then work on each separate design element. I decided to use the ruche frames technique I created for the tail design. I just really wanted a lot of texture. And here I'm going to show you how we do a ruche frame. So you basically want to pad a framed in area and then stitch it to cover it up later. And you want to use a heavy acrylic blend yarn and uh, stitch on within the locker hooked frame and you're going to take big stitches over the top and then tiny stitches on the back side. And you're gonna to wanna to do this to fill in a, a nice padding. Small stitches on the back and longer stitches on the front. And just take your time in doing this. I'm kind of rushing through for the sake of the video, but take your time uh, in layering these stitches small stitches on the back and longer stitches on the front. And you can go over the same area more than once uh, to get the, the proper amount of padding. And then you can be the judge. I mean, you can pad it up very heavily or just lightly as I'm doing here. Depends on how much um, padding you want and how textural you want the tail area to look. If this is too much work for you and you decide that it's it's just a, a bit more than you'd like to do, then you can always just use traditional locker hooking and fill in the tail design. Oops, we got it. Fabric strip caught there. And here we're taking a big stitch here. So I think you get the idea. 
big stitches on the front, tiny stitches on the back, and you can layer over to get the proper amount of padding. And then just take your time as you work. And you can always clean this up a little bit later if it gets a, a little linty. There we go. Okay, so here we are now stitching the ruched frame. And this is the most challenging part. Um, you're going to want to use your fingers to make sure that each fabric strip is unraveled and, and pulled over neatly. And the idea here is to cover up all of that padding that you stitched on with the yarn. And you want to take a, a stitch in every square and it's got to be right where you lock or hooked that frame. And remember to use your fingers to straighten out the strip and gently lie it in place, press it in. And you're going to do this to cover the entire area, just basically wrapping this whole area. I chose to use cotton strips, hand-dyed cotton strips for some of this, but I wanted to uh, combine different textures, so I also used ribbon for some of the segments, and also I used some recycled silk and some of the, the tail feathers. I think it gave it a fun look. Okay, here we go. So you just want to uh, use your fingers and make sure that you're uh, laying down the wrap stitches nicely. Okay, now we're getting down to the final stitches and we're are going to do the eye stitch here. And this is exciting because it's beginning to look complete. So just make sure you count over the a proper amount of squares from the edge of, of the head and get that stitch in right where it belongs. And always use your fingers to arrange. There we go. That looks great. For the landscape segment, I chose to use some raffia. This multi-colored raffia is fun for creating foliage. And you're going to be stitching on some long stitches to create these grasses. And so basically, you know, find the uh, square and work your tapestry needle through there and create some stitches in the form of a V. There we go. And then you'll tie that up in the back later. But um, you're going to want to just take some long stitches here. And this is the final stitch and then your project will be almost complete. You don't have to use raffia. You can also choose to use uh, different colored fabric, cotton fabric strips or ribbons. It's really up to you. I just love the texture of this. It gives it a nice, nice look. And then we're stitching on here another long, few long blades of grass. And maybe use your fingers to arrange the stitches. Probably needs one more stitch here, I think. And work it through. There we go. And also feel free to create your own design. I, I chose to do these long grasses because I think it kind of adds nice texture to the design. So when you're done locker hooking your Phoenix rooster, you'll most likely have an awful lot of tails on the reverse side. And you don't necessarily have to sew them all in. You can choose to just clip them to about an inch and a half or so, like I've done here. And you're going to want to add a backing. So to add a backing, you cut your fabric to size. Use an iron-on fusible to reinforce it. And then use a, a steam iron and press under the seam allowances and adjust and press under until it fits nicely. And then do a top stitch on the inside, about a quarter inch on the inside as shown in this image on the top. 
and uh, then add some adhesive to that all the way around the edge a little on the inside as you see in the image on the bottom right and then uh, press it in place press it in place and weigh it down with something to hold it in place and then let it dry and you're ready to go if you want to add a hanging loop then uh, follow instructions according to your pattern to add that before you glue the backing in place and that's it I hope you enjoy your Phoenix Rooster. If you'd like to locker hook the Phoenix Rooster, you can download a free pattern or you can purchase a full size color pattern as shown here. You can also purchase a kit with all of the materials required. Visit colorcrazy.com. And while you're there, make sure you check out all the other free patterns for download.